There's nowhere you won't go Nothing you won't do No place that I could hide You were always in pursuit I'm never too far gone Always in your side When I wait for you You're always right on time You're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me You made a way for me Opened up the door Jesus, you have my heart Now and forevermore You're always pursuing Oh, the life in my bones 
Easter experience last weekend. Me! Woo! If you missed it, at least you're here today. And don't worry, we are still going to have so much fun this weekend. If you're thinking to yourself, man, I wish I could just relive last weekend over and over because it was so much fun, fear not, because today we are keeping the party going. That's right, especially this weekend because I brought eggs. Oh, <laughs> eggs. Fat eating. Um, See? Charles? Yeah. These are styrofoam balls. Use some imagination, Tracy. They're, quote, eggs. Okay, okay. Wow, what large eggs you have brought today, Charles. Yeah, I know, right? Thank you for this. Right? I know, you're right? They're amazing. Woo! Well, today we are dyeing Easter eggs, but with a twist. A twist other than the fact that these are not eggs. They are, in fact, styrofoam little ball things. Yes! More of a twist! We have a mixture of crazy things to decorate with. And whoever decorates the best egg... Wins! Yes, wins. Ha <laughs> ha! I love it! We have a bucket here of things. Of things, of things. fun things. A hot glue gun. Yes. A pair of scissors back here. And then, let's see, ouch. Uh-uh, don't, don't, don't tell them what it is. Lots of things. Lots of things. So, what we're going to do is reach our hand in the bucket, pull something out, whatever you grab, you have to use on your egg. Charles, you draw first. What's your first item that you're going to use? What's your first item that you're going to use? Ooh, beads. little beads. That's exciting. Very nice. Go get draw something. I, I, I just... draw <gasps> jewels. What? How deep does this go? What is this, a How tape deep? measure? <laughs> no! Thank you, Lord! Your mercies no. are new. You know what? Glitter is illegal in many places. Woohoo! Extra fine, extra lame glitter, oh that's what my I say. Gosh. Okay. I omit the use Ooh, of that glitter. Letters. Interesting. How am I gonna do this? Okay. More messy stuff. <laughs> Puff paint! How do you get paint? I don't what know. Do I get? Hey! Paint. Okay, I'll do Although I don't paper. Wanna get, I don't wanna get this paint <laughs> on the table. Sharpie. Ooh, I know how Is to that do, it? I know how to use Sharpie. Another paintbrush. I'll, I'll tell you that much watching that your it? Fun okay. finger trick. Uh, kind of. All right. Three, two, one, go. I already forgot what I was doing. Like three, minutes? three minutes. I don't even know how to open this. Come on, get out of here, glue. You can do it. Woo! Go glue. Just spent three go minutes glue. opening this package. Go glue. Go glue. Open. <laughs> so hot. Oh, I got to paint. You got to be versatile. Quick, know what you're doing. It looks like a some sort of <laughs> science object. This is a cell. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to paint, so I don't think this paint is. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I don't think this thing is meant to be painted on. Um, only one minute and forty. How? I feel like uh, 
yeah, that's what I thought. It's fine, it's fine. I just can't even open this, it's sealed. I need to, I need glue. All, all I can do is glue. Come on, come on, come on. You can do this. You can do, oh, that's not even the trigger. I almost burnt myself. I can't. Come on. Oh my gosh. Come on, little dude. You got this. You got it. Tracy, T for Tracy. Are you kidding me? None of this stuff is. Okay. Yeah. My egg will be in a nest. <laughs> 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I have nothing to do in 10 seconds. Does it look like it's in a nest? Okay. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Oh! Wow. Yours looks like a planet. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> These are beautiful. Purple hair. Uh, purple crazy hair. That was hair. good. I don't, I don't know what What's this is. It's a face. are kind of scary. Did you not use your glitter? I was being cautious to the environment. Fair. You instant lose. I don't instant yes, lose. Yes, you do. You have to use all what, your supplies. Because mine looks awesome without using everything wow. I have. I accept my trophy. You know, Thank when you, I invite someone to kids. Christ, I don't read him the Thank entire you. Bible. Thank you, church kids. If you think the fun is over, you are mistaken. Because we have a great game for you all to play today. So let's check it out. Yeah. In this race, all you're gonna need is 20 cups per person. You're gonna lay out your cups in five rows of four, and your goal is to stack all your cups into one tower, and then break them all back down into five rows of four. If you can beat your opponent doing that, then you are the power stack race champion. All right, let's get into this game. The game begins in three, two, one. Each one of you is a part of that body. All of you together are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of that body. First Corinthians 12, 27. Said first Corinthians 12, 27. Have you ever thought your role wasn't worth it? Like if you quit, others wouldn't notice it. Well, let me tell you, that's a big lie that is. A rotten old piece of pie fact is. If one part suffers, all of them do. And if one gets praised, then the rest do too. Each one does a different thing. But all together, they serve the king. We got head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Feet on the knees, mouth and nose. If the nose tries to hear and the ear tries to smell, uh oh, don't think that works so well. Not everyone is called to be a teacher or a prophet, an apostle or a healer. Some parts seem weak, but they're not. So whatever you do, give it all you got. All the parts work together. You might be saying in whatever But if you're moving a rock about the size of a crock You better use all your limbs or you will buckle under pressure All of you together are the body of Christ Each one of you is a part of that body All of you together are the body of Christ Each one of you is a part of that body All of you together are the body of Christ 
body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of that body. First Corinthians 12, 27 said, First Corinthians 12, 27. Our memory verse this month is, all of you together are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of that body. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Friends, a body can't just be a head, right? That wouldn't work. Just a head bobbling around, rolling, doing nothing. A body needs other parts in order to function. Right? The church is called the body of Christ because it isn't just one person. It wouldn't work if it was just one guy running around telling people about God. We can't do it alone. The church has many people who all have Jesus in their hearts and who share the good news about him. Yeah, we all have an important role in the church, just like every body part has an important role. Mm -hmm. Once you ask Jesus into your heart, you are part of God's church, and you are a part of the family. Remember, you have a home in his house. God's house is the church. He lives in us, and you have a home with him. You belong here. You are loved, and you are safe with him. It's time for our lesson where we are going to learn even more about the church. Let's check it out. Mowing the lawn, pulling weeds, planting flowers. All this yard work sure is tiring. But it's worth it. Connect HQ sure is looking good. It is nice to get off our feet for a little while though. Why isn't Tony outside helping us? He's vacuuming inside. He vacuums when he's excited. What's he excited about? Uh, his cousin Ellen is coming for a visit. That went with me excited. My cousins drive me crazy. Are you sure Tony is excited she's coming? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. My name is Tony, and this is the time things got real fishy around Connect HQ. This way, guys. Perfect. Set that stuff down there. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's good, too. This stuff is heavy. I'm very, very impressed that you guys got it all the way from the storage unit up here. Explain to us again why you can help us carry your fishing gear. Oh, I just, well, see, I have to save my energy for my fishing trip with my cousin Ellen. <laughs> see, we go on a fishing trip every single year. <laughs> this one year, I don't know if I told you this yet or not. You told us. Oh, um, well, this one year, <laughs> um, she got a fish that was this big, and then I got a fish that was this big. It was the best, best day, day ever. ever. <laughs> hey, guys, we got a postcard. Dear Connect HQ, my name is Gage and I love Jesus. I want others to meet Jesus, so I'm always inviting people to church. My friends, my football coach, even people I met at the grocery store. But I always seem to get a no. How can I get people to know God if they won't come to church with me? I really want them to know and love Jesus the way I do. Help. That's great that Gage wants to bring people to church. You know what, you're right. But he needs our help to figure out how to get the church to them too. Hmm. Jake, why don't you work on the verse link, and Edison, why don't you work on the point link, and I'll work on the Bible link. Uh, it might be hard to work with the stuff in the middle of the room. Hmm. You know what, you're right. You know, why don't you guys uh, take this to the lounge, and then we'll get to work. It defies the laws of physics, but somehow I think this stuff is getting heavier. I need to stop and rest for a minute. Uh, I thought of a verse link while we were carrying this stuff through the halls. Really? What is it? Um, all this talk about fishing reminded me of a verse from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 17. Say it like this. Mark 1, 17. Mark 1, 17. Come follow me, Jesus said. Come follow me, Jesus said. And I will send you out to fish for people. And I will send you out to fish for people. Gage is doing a good thing inviting people to church. It's part of going out and sharing Jesus with others. Just like the first disciples did. Good work, Edison. You 
she is, guys. Here's my cousin, Ellen! Hi, I'm... Hi, you must be Edison, and you must be Jake. I am so excited to meet you both. Tony's told me all about you, and I am so excited for our fishing trip, oh, cause... No. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if Tony told you, but we go on a fishing trip every year. It's come up. <laughs> this one year, the fish were practically jumping in the boat. Tony caught one this big, and I caught one this big. It was literally the, the best, best day ever! ever. <laughs> well, that is a really nice crackle box you got there. Uh, what? No, Jake, this is not a crackle box. It's a tackle box. Sorry, I've never fished before. <gasps> whoa, whoa. <gasps> Oh, wow. Wait, you, you've never fished before? No, I've never even held a fishing stick. Oh my. <laughs> it's called a fishing pole, Jake. <laughs> I learned that from my online fishing game. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait, have, have you never been fishing either? Mm. Oh, wow, you guys are really missing out. The tranquil waters, the smell of the lake, the feel of the tug when the line pulls and you reel in a fish bigger than the one that your cousin caught. <laughs> And don't forget the sack lunches. <laughs> Actually, I have some sack lunches for us. They're in the lounge. If you follow me, I can show you around. Awesome. And I also think that you're remembering the size of your fish wrong. Mm -mm. No, see, I clearly remember my fish was this big, all right? And that was just the first one. The second one was this big. <laughs> So now you're claiming that you got more than one fish? Mm -hmm. You are out of control. <laughs> Thanks, cuz. This place is pretty awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. We get to help kids all over the world with their problems. Seems like the perfect place for you. You've always loved helping people. Well, look who's talking. <laughs> How are things down at the hospital? I love it. You know, I get to share my love for Jesus with the people that really need it. I get to learn about my patients, see what their lives are like, and share with them what it's like to follow Jesus. What a cool story. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But I also like to get away and have a nice relaxing fishing trip. <laughs> yes, but I haven't had a chance to organize my lures just yet. Well, where's the boat? Well, Edison and Jake brought it up from the storage unit, but I'm not sure where they put it. Okay, well, I'll go look for it. Okay. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to find. It's a boat in a building. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> okay, so this is a... Tackle box. Mm -hmm. Very good. See, I like to organize my lures by color. So see, you can put your reds over here, then you put your yellows, and then you can split it down the middle right there. What does it mean to fish for people? Wait, what? Uh, what do you mean? Edison said Jesus told his followers that he would send them out to fish for people. What exactly does that mean? Well, you see, some of Jesus' friends were actual fishermen. Simon, Andrew, James, and John spent their entire life learning the best way to fish. And instead of fishing for fish, now they fish for people. Being fishermen was their job, right? Yes, but Jesus gave them a new job. Like I said, instead of fishing for fish, they fish for people. It's a little hard to understand. Hmm. You know what, here, maybe this will help. One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a big crowd of people gathered. As the crowd grew, the people pressed closer and closer to Jesus. Jesus saw two empty boats at the water's edge. The fishermen had left and were washing their nets. Jesus stepped into one of the boats. It belonged to Simon and his brother, Andrew. Simon? Don't you mean Peter? Well, later Jesus gives Simon a new name and calls him Peter. But that hasn't happened yet, so in this story, his name is still Simon. Got it. So where were we? Oh yeah, Jesus asked Simon to take him out on the water away from the shore. Right, and Simon did it. Jesus sat in the boat away from the shore and taught the crowds from there. When Jesus finished teaching, he said, Go out where it is deep and let down your nets to catch some fish. We worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing, but if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. Simon and Andrew let down their nets, and this time, when they pulled the nets out of the sea, they were so full of fish, they began to tear. They called out to their friends who owned the other boat. Guys, bring your boat over here. You're not going to believe this. James, John, and their father, Zebedee, brought their boat over. Soon, both boats were so full of fish, 
they almost sank. The fishermen were amazed. They knew Jesus had performed a miracle right in front of them. Simon fell to his knees. He was in awe. Simon saw how powerful Jesus was and knew he must have been sent by God. Oh Lord, please leave me. I don't deserve to be near you. I have disobeyed God. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Jesus meant that from that day forward, they would be telling people everywhere about Jesus and his power. And because of that, many would choose to follow Jesus. When they got back to shore, Simon and his brother Andrew decided to follow Jesus. Their friends, James and John, left their boat with their father so they could follow Jesus too. Those four fishermen left everything behind so they could follow Jesus' example. They learned about Jesus, spent time with him, and discovered how to do everything the way Jesus did. And that's how Simon, also known as Peter, along with Andrew, James, and John, became Jesus' very first disciples. Simon, Andrew, James, and John left everything to follow Jesus. Yes, but they learned so much. Jesus taught them how to follow him. And then whenever he returned to heaven, he gave them a mission to teach others how to become followers. And that's what it means to fish for people. Yes, even today, as followers of Jesus, we are meant to show other people how to become followers. That's why it's so important to invite people to church, like Gage is doing. Yes, but we can do so much more. We can tell our friends about what we learned about in church. We can meet new people and tell them that Jesus died for them. And then we can also share our joy and tell other people that it came from following Jesus. There is so much we can do to fish for people. Thanks for sharing that Bible link, Tony. No, you are welcome. Now that we know that, let's get back to actual fishing. See, now that the lures are organized, easily accessible. Go get a catfish, you get the mouse lure right here. There it is. Shh, you scare away the fish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I know I'm on dry land. Okay. <laughs> it's relaxing, right? It is. You should try it on water sometime. I don't know. I don't think fishing is for me. I doubt sitting in a boat for hours is ever going to be my best day ever. I don't care how many fish I catch. <laughs> what? Best day ever. You know, I don't call it that because of the amount of fish we caught that day. I call it that because that's the day I decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> really? Not in a church? Nope. Out there on the water, in this very boat, thanks to Tony. Tony? What did he do? Well, wherever Tony goes, his love for God is evident. Yeah. It overflows into his life. And whenever we were out there on the water, he would tell me about Jesus and his love and what it means to follow Jesus. He has such joy, you know? Mm. And so one day I decided that I wanted that joy for myself. So Tony helped me pray to God and become a follower of Jesus. And that was your best, best day, day ever. ever. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like the point link we found for Gage. I'm on a mission to go fishing for people. Wherever I go, I want to be following Jesus and helping others be followers of Jesus too. <laughs> just like Tony. I like that. I'm on a mission to go fishing for people. And we can do that anywhere, at the church, on the water, wherever we might be. Oh, I have a question about worms. Of course, yeah. <laughs> do you have to put it on the hook? Like, yeah, you just slide it right on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think fishing is for me. <clears throat> I got the poles, check. I got the tackle box, check. I got the snacks, check. And check. All right, so what are we missing? Oh, the boat. Where's the boat? Oh, it's in the observatory. We are not carrying that thing back to this room. For goodness sake, I'm just a kid. Oh, guys, no, I wouldn't make you lug that thing all the way back in here. But if you could, just take it downstairs, strap it to the top of Ellen's car, we'll be on our way. Okay. It's really nice to meet you both. <clears throat> Hello, Gage. Edison here. First, I want to say good job on inviting people to church. 
It's just like the Bible says in the book of Mark. Say it with me like this. Mark 1.17 Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Jesus has given us an important job to help other people know him so that they can follow him too. Simon, Andrew, James, and John caught fish for a living. It was their job. But when they decided to follow Jesus, he gave them a new job, fish for people. And inviting people to church is just one part of that job. We can also tell others about Jesus in schools, in our neighborhoods, or even on vacation, like a fishing trip. So keep up the good work of inviting friends to church, and also tell them why you love Jesus and why you follow him. Don't get discouraged. God is with you every step of the way. You just have to remember, I'm on a mission to go fishing for people. From one Jesus follower to another, let's go fishing. Remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Now that you've learned the ABCs, we want to give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart. When you say yes to Jesus, you are putting him first, making him the leader and Lord of your life. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all say this prayer together. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell your Connect Group leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps. Remember that you have a home in his house. You belong here. You are loved and you are a part of the family. See you next week. And don't forget, it's a great day to, to be a church, church kid! kid!